Welcome everyone to tonight's Wine Wednesday. Thank you for joining me. I am waiting for the beautiful Amy to arrive. She is currently in route and should be here soon. I had a little bit of time to kill and I didn't want to tap in the wine before she arrives. So I thought I would sit down and talk with you about tonight's hot topic, which is sex, or I should say lack thereof. We are going to be talking about the sex starved marriage or low to no sex marriages. What exactly is a sexless marriage? A sexless marriage is defined as a marriage with little or no sexual activity between the two people. The best way to put a sex starved marriage is one where one spouse is desperately longing for more touch, more physical closeness, and more connection. And the other spouse is thinking, what's the big deal? It's just sex. Get a life. Don't you have something to do? It's perfectly fine to have a sexless marriage if both the husband and wife are okay with it and they still have a happy marriage. When we run into trouble is when one of the spouses is not happy with this and they are craving sex and they want physical intimacy in the relationship. Don't assume that your spouse is okay with you and him or you and her not engaging in physical intimacy, even if they are not expressing it. Now you may be wondering how much sex are married couples having? Let me just share with you that you have to pertain to tonight's video to how it serves you. I will be talking about heterosexual relationships, but you could apply this to a same sex relationship if that is what speaks to you. So the big question, exactly how much sex are married couples having and what is okay and what is not okay? Well, again, like I had mentioned, if you are both on board and you're happy and there's no dysfunction, then that's perfectly fine. But in most cases, that is not to be true. In tonight's video, you will have to pertain what Amy and I are talking about to how it applies to you. Let's go over some statistics. On average, only about 7% of married couples set the sheet ablaze. Most couples have sex a little more than once a week for the first decade of marriage. It decreases after that. So they have sex about 58 times a year and 20% of marriages meet the criteria of a sexless marriage. And that is defined by the experts as less than 10 times a year. So some people may say, I don't have a sexless marriage because maybe we're having sex six times a year, but the experts are claiming that it is 10 times or less. And again, you have to take everything that Amy and I talk about in tonight's video and see how it can serve and apply to you. According to a national newspaper survey of approximately 10,000 respondents, mostly married men, 75% were satisfied in their relationship, but 50% noted they were dissatisfied with their sex lives. Another statistic is 50% of men said they would not have married the same person had they known they would be left sexless. Now bear in mind that it is not always the woman who has no interest in sex. It can be the man as well. And I want to make sure as we are talking in this video that you understand that. Now, if you look at the demographics of who is watching my videos, it is going to be a lot more women. So a lot of the video may come off where I am talking more to the women, but that's because that is who is generally watching my video. Again, if you are the one that has a desire for physical intimacy and it's your spouse who does not, then you would just apply this video to how it serves you. Let's go over some common reasons for a sexless marriage. This may not cover everything. Everyone's situation is going to be unique to them, but these are the common reasons mismatched sexual libidos or sex drives, relationship conflict, negative feelings toward your partner like anger or resentment, punitive or passive aggressive withholding of sex, boredom, tiredness, infidelity, childbirth, which I would think would make sense at least during the first few weeks, stress, 
Erectile dysfunction, vaginal discomfort. This can be common during the menopause years. Hyposexual desire disorder. This is low sex drive, and this can be triggered in women when they're going through menopause as well. Side effects to medications, depression or other mental health issues, history of sexual abuse and pornography addiction. Now again, there could be more than just that, but those are the most common reasons. All right, that should be a good prerequisite before Amy gets here. I am sure she will be arriving soon. Hello everyone, we are back. The beautiful Amy has arrived and we are ready to talk about sex. I'll let Amy take the, take the stage and do the, let's talk about Let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the good things and the bad things that will be. Let's I, love I love it. I love it. I love it. I a lot of times I do chime in, but I didn't today. I don't have the voice. <laughs> you just haven't had any wine yet. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> well, welcome, my beautiful friend. Thank you. So good to see you. Cheers to seeing you. Cheers. cheers to friendship. And yes, you cheers always to good know. sex. Mm, yes, cheers to good sex. Or for some people, just sex, period. They'll take bad sex. <laughs> is there? Yeah, there is. But yeah, you're right, sadly. Mm -hmm. So you already, you shared a lot about, um, with the audience already, mm -hmm. what a sexless marriage is, which the definition in and of itself surprises a lot of people. Yeah, because you would, th would, would I think many people would think no sex. I have sex almost month a, once a month. I don't have a sexless marriage. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right. And that's the. Again, yes, there is a definition, but you know, as we were just saying, your sex life, the contentment with which you both have, right, it's really up to you, right. As long as both people completely agree. And I actually have um, not a client, but a friend. Her and her husband were very content with sex once a year, and they were in their thirties. Okay. 20s, 30s? And did she disclose this to you? See, and I've thought about that, mm -hmm. yes. She okay. said they were both very happy that he was... I would love to hear his, his side, side because Absolutely. there's three sides to every story, folks. His, hers, and, and the, the truth. truth. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I think that there's a lot of women out there that would believe that their husband is completely satisfied with the frequency okay. and maybe the activity level, the... Uh, the ambition involved and, and how playful and right. deep down they're really not. And I did go over some of the statistics with you that was shared in a study or in a survey. So yeah, let's, let's expand on... Well, that's the perfect place to start because we have to communicate about sex. Yeah. I mean, again, sometimes men don't know how to discuss it. Women don't know how to discuss it. Sometimes that's my job as a couples therapist to help facilitate that communication. But you, you, you really do need to communicate because it is a very important part, whether it's occurring or not, right. it's a very important part of the relationship to at least be on the same page about, to, to understand, to have the, the emotional intimacy to really understand exactly how your partner feels about it. Right. I agree. And you have to look at it from a different angle as well. When we are talking about raising our children, we are talking about our finances, household chores, all of the things that need to take place that are big things in a marriage. Many people don't recognize that your sex life is also very important. And like Amy said, it's not communicated about. Can you imagine if you weren't communicating with your spouse about your finances? Can you imagine where your finances would be right now? Well, it's the same thing with sex. It needs to be an open dialogue between a husband and a wife or to a sex union of some sort. Well, that didn't go good. <laughs> I think they, yeah. any kind of, yes, any partnership where it is romantic yeah. sexual relationship. Right. And yeah. you just said something that I think is really key. A lot of people, and unfortunately mostly women, um, have had, well I guess men too to some degree, but in a different way, have had negative messages about sex their whole lives, or especially in their formative years as mm -hmm. children and adolescent, that it's dirty, that it's bad. Mm -hmm. Oh, reserve it for marriage. But if you're telling someone that some, you know, especially like I said, um, a child or an adolescent that are forming opinions and, and 
really are, you know, taking every word as gospel and you're saying that something's bad, that sticks. And that is one problem that a lot of people have in why some marriages are right. sexless. The other thing is that particularly boys are exposed to porn at a younger and younger age now because of the internet. They're, they're not learning how to connect emotionally. They're not really learning, you know, how to lay a foundation for a good sexual relationship later in their lives. And to be honest, porn can affect boys and men mm -hmm. such that it, it does affect their libido. As a it's a different for women. With women, the more the better. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the more you engage in some kind of physical activity, mm -hmm. the more you're going to be aroused. Right. And that kind of leads into fantasizing, if it's in a good way. Mm -hmm. uh, fantasizing is very healthy for an individual. So don't uh, feel that if your husband has some of these fantasies that maybe you wouldn't be comfortable with, it'd be, it'd be whether or not he was comfortable sharing his fantasies with you, but there's nothing wrong with having fantasies as long as it's not something that would be completely inappropriate. Because sex organ is the brain. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But I think that goes back to what, you know, if you are in a sexless marriage, if you have negative views about sex, Look at your mind, look at your psyche. Is it because you were given negative messages? Or are, have you become so wrapped up and staying busy that you're not even in touch with your body? I was just telling Tracy, you know, part of our sensual self is even just, you know, recognizing what feels good. If it's something that we're wearing, if it's the sun, if it's, you know, anything physically that feels good. And I think, you know, this, this is maybe jumping the gun a little bit. We're going to talk about how to I don't want to say fix, mm -hmm. how to fix a, you know, if it's a problem for the two of you. One thing that I think is very important is for, for you to be very in touch with your body. Um, I think, you know, some people will have different viewpoints on it, but masturbation mm -hmm. is something that I, that I think can be very significantly impactful for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And looking at sex as something that is not dirty, it's uh, like like Amy said, it can your views can be really tainted from just your childhood and thinking that it's something bad. But it is okay to enjoy sex. It is okay to love sex. It is okay to enjoy having an orgasm. It is okay to express that orgasm freely with your partner, so that he or she knows that you are being pleasured. Uh, that's very euphoric for them. It really is. Oh, it's so it's empowering. empowering. It's empowering. That's exactly yes. what I was going to they say. want to know that they are pleasing you, and there is a big element of ego, especially for a male, and his self confidence. If he does not feel that he is being desired or attract, you're attracted to him. Uh, the impact of a sexless marriage can be different for a man and a woman because we are more emotional beings where men are more physical. So we get kind of our fill and our fix from the emotional aspect, but recognize that men get that from the physical aspect. So where you may want to feel loved, he needs to be felt like he's appreciated, he, you're attracted to him, and that you're that he brings you pleasure. It, it goes a long way with a man, and it's amazing the damage that can take place, especially in a man, if he is not receiving this. So it kind of goes back to the theory of, you know, when when do we look at what is my responsibility in this marriage? And there may be times when you don't necessarily feel up to engaging in sex, but always remember, isn't there an element of wanting to please your partner? Because when it comes to us, we want to be pleased as well. He may not want to take out the garbage or do certain household duties, but he just does it. And sometimes we as women, even if we're not up to it, we just need to do it as well. And really, Think about how you got into this relationship. There probably was a time early on where you enjoyed sex and something came along, maybe it was the children, whatever it may be, but 
it's okay to enjoy it and express it freely. I, we, our bodies were designed to be pleasured in this way. First of all, in, in, in no particular order, I'm just kind of going back chronologically mm -hmm. as to what you mm -hmm. said, whether it's a male or a female, if you are, if you feel that you are not, if you feel that you're in a sexist marriage or, you know, a, um, that your, your partner is not interested in having sex with you, you feel unloved, you feel rejected, you feel unwanted, and you feel lonely because yeah. you feel like you're alone in your experience. And A, that is more detriment, more people will die from loneliness than several of the big medical diseases. And I, I, and I'm never going to say, I'm never going to condone infidelity, but loneliness is a huge um, driving force behind mm -hmm. infidelity. Um, a lot of times, you know, that other person is satisfying a need that may not even be physical, but somehow it's making that person feel wanted and that's what they're in search of. And so that is that is one thing I wanted to address. Women typically have less testosterone, less testosterone so therefore their desire is a little bit buried. It's there. It's not that you don't want sex. You just are going to need not only that emotional stimulation, you're going to likely need some physical stimulation before that desire is actually felt and experienced. I liken it to... <laughs> <laughs> Oops! I liken it to, um, you know, when you're... Maybe not even so much in our age, but when you have this party that you have to go to. It's the winter time, it's 8 o'clock, you're snuggled up on the couch, you have no desire to go to that party but you rally, you get yourself ready, you go to the party, you have a fantastic time. Isn't that how sex is right. oftentimes? Yeah. Now, if there is some, if, if there is dysfunction in the, in the relationship, if there is no emotional connectedness, I'm not saying to just go all in. If you have a lot of resentment, I'm not saying, you know, you always have to, to do that because sometimes you may, again, communicate, I need a little bit of emotional connectedness right now yeah. from you or yeah, I just um, can't jump right in. Right. Exactly. Or or you know, I need to We need to be warmed up a right. little bit sometimes. Not always, but some of us. <laughs> but for the most part, if you're not totally opposed to it, if you're just kind of thinking, oh, I don't really want to, a lot of times, like I said, you know, fake it till you make it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't, I don't mean, again, if there's some, you know, there's some significant dis dysfunction mm -hmm. or disconnectedness. Mm -hmm. Um, but a lot of times we, we just think that we have to feel like we're all in right away to say yes. That's often not the case. Our bodies don't work that way typically. No. And one of the biggest words that Amy said was connection. And it really does boil down to being connected with your spouse. Uh, because when there's that disconnect there, that's when we kind of get into that dysfunctional state in our relationship. And sex often is the first thing to go. And the other thing that Amy had hit on was rejection. And that's a big one. And bear in mind, ladies, gentlemen, that when we are talking about sex, again, this is not solely talking about the woman or the, the lady, the female, not being interested. This can go both ways, but when we speak, it's probably going to pertain more to the woman's side. And I would say that probably more women are withdrawn from sex than men, but that doesn't mean that's always the case. You know, the, the, the top, one of the, I think finances is the number one reason that will get a couple into therapy and sex or lack thereof is the second most prominent. The numbers I hear typically are it's more 80-20 that it's more of the woman who has the lower sex drive, 80% of the women. Oh, but I see a lot of women and, and they're also starving for that physical mm -hmm. affection and and a lot of times, if it's in a sexless marriage, that's lacking. Not all the time, of course, mm -hmm. but um, that physical connection, you know, and the other thing I didn't mention is oxytocin, mm -hmm. important chemical that, that, that makes you feel bonded to your partner is released during sex as it is during breastfeeding, ironically. You're being, you know, that's, that was put there for a reason, right. that chemical, so that you feel connected to your newborn, to your child, mm -hmm. to your infant, and also to your partner. That hormone was not, you know, that's not in our body for, for nothing. Right. You're supposed to 
feel connected to your partner with sex. A lot of times what I'll tell my couples is, and I'll use the, you know, the example of the female with the lower sex drive. I'm not saying that, again, if there's a lot of dysfunction, a lot of, you're in crisis mode, you know, you have to deal with those issues first. But don't wait until you're feeling one, again, 100% ready for sex because sex is going to make you feel more more right. close to your partner. You know, you, you think it's just the male and, and it is very important to the male, but it is something that is going to, to bond you. Right. A very important yeah. part of your relationship. Yeah, it really is. And I think a lot of women feel that their husband doesn't want to engage in the warm up and she needs a little bit more of that. But this goes back to the communication. If you need a little bit more foreplay, let's say, prior to actually engaging into the whole experience, then that's where you would communicate. And you would say, I realize you're our rare and to go, but I don't work that way. I need to be warmed up a little bit. And you can also play a role in that. Another big area that men tend to really desire having more from their partner is for them to uh, initiate it. Often it's the man that's initiating or the male that's initiating sex. And this also could go back to what we heard during our teen years. Sex is dirty, sex is bad. Just remember that bad and good are a judgment that you make. They're only a judgment. And that sometimes will hold a woman back or she feels it's part of the man's role to be the initiator. Well, think about how he is feeling if you are never initiating. Because again, he needs to feel that you're attracted to him, that you have a desire for him to pleasure you and you want to please him. So it's important to really, you know, put some value into that and step out of your comfort zone. And again, go back, and we'll talk more about this, but go back to what made you connect initially. And if you were to think back to your dating years or early marriage when things were a lot more spiced up, there's nothing wrong with going there again. Another big topic with women is body image issues. Uh, we want the lights off or I feel fat. How you feel about you is not how he feels about you. So always remember that. They, our, our husbands are highly, highly attracted to us no matter how we look. So don't hold back. Turn the lights on, have a little fun, explore. You know, yeah, <laughs> I, could, I could go a few more areas, but yeah, just don't, don't hold back. He is going to be so thankful for that. But again, this is where the communication comes in. You know, what, what would please you? You know, what, what would you like me to do or to please the, you? We could actually do a little role playing at some point. Well, you know, I think wine. what an important question is too, what would, what can I do? that would help you be more interested in sex. Is there something, you know, how, what, what can we do? You know, yeah. it, you know, because oftentimes a, a woman or a man is going to be very open and, and say, I don't know why. And, you know, well, do you, is there anything I can do? What do you think would help? Right. Sometimes, you know, and again, sometimes just to kind of go backtrack a little to what you were saying, body image issues, negative views about sex, which sometimes unfortunately are the result of, of sexual abuse, these things need to be dealt with yeah. anyway. They need to be dealt with right. either with a therapist or coach yeah. or something that can help you resolve those issues. And again, this is for for you, whoever's right. watching this, male mm -hmm. or female, to have a more fulfilling life. Right. It's not, you know, don't just do it for your partner. Do it so that you can be at peace and have more fulfillment as well. Yeah, but yeah. yes, you're right. Um, you know, what do you enjoy? Do you enjoy when I do this? And, mm -hmm. and to be able to have those kinds of conversations could be hugely impactful. That, that conversation in and of itself is going to lead to greater feelings of intimacy, emotional intimacy, mm -hmm. because you're feeling more um, that you understand each other better. Yeah. Let's say you just would like your husband to hang on to your hand when you're out. If you're out and about, I just would like you to hang on to my hand. Or, you know, I just wish you'd just, you know, rub, rub on my shoulder like this. I don't want you just going right in for the gusto. I need, I need things outside of the bedroom. They always say that 
it, it's not what's happening inside the bedroom that's making the impact, it's what's happening outside the bedroom. I believe this is pivotal, pivotal for women especially. Mm -hmm. It really is, so that's where communicate, I need you to do this, I really feel good when you do that. What we have to be careful of too is that we're not doing a lot of finger pointing. Take some responsibility and ownership for yourself. Uh, express what you love that he does instead of focusing on what he doesn't do. I love when you do this. I love when you do that. I love when you walk in the kitchen and you just kind of brush past me and you just give me that little rub. It makes me feel good. All of these are subtle foreplay, really, and it can lead to more, but it's, it's up to you to be the communicator. And Amy had focused a little bit on dysfunctional. If you are in a relationship where anything is dysfunctional, this is when you want to seek professional help because dysfunctional needs to get to functional and then we can get to optimal. In my world, everything that I do is optimal. I talk about that with health and wellness. You can be healthy, but do you want optimal health? Well, how do you want your relationship? You want to go from functioning to optimal, but if you're in a dysfunctional relationship and sex being the, the key factor, it could be anything, seek help so that you can get to functional. And then from there, we can build on that and get you to optimal. I love when I love the expanding yes. off of one another. I love that. Well, and I've said this before. Intuitive listening. There yes. you go. Intuitive listening. This is so important. Um, as you were, you know, uh, again, a lot of women say, you know, good wine. I was yes. just saying that. Um, they do. They want to place the blame, point the finger. Well, he doesn't do this, and he mm -hmm. doesn't do that. And mm -hmm. and one thing to you know is to explain to your partner, um, all of those kind gestures, loving gestures, make you feel more inclined to be sexual. Sometimes your partner needs that ex explanation. They don't understand. I've heard it said, and I've shared this before, a woman's next orgasm begins at the end of the, the last, last one. one. Yeah. So Absolutely. all of those, again, the kind, loving gestures, mm -hmm. the, the, mm -hmm. the um, physical affection, Helping around the house sometimes is something that is, mm -hmm. you know, means a lot to, I want to say, a female. Yeah. You know, I hate to yeah. con continually go back to those stereotypes, but. Well, we're exhausted too. Women mm -hmm. are exhausted. We're doing everything. We're burning the candle at both ends. That's the part of the problem. Exactly. You're the, doing this with the PTA. You're doing this mm -hmm. with at work. You're doing this for mm -hmm. the, the kids. And, and you know what? The most basic is to put the yes, relationship yes. as a top priority. Well, let me, here's the question of the day. And you know I always go back to what are you going to say no to, to say yes to something else. What are you connecting to in your life? So think about that. That's a thought. Write that down somewhere. What am, or no, put it this way. I am connecting to, and see if your spouse shows up in there. Social media is a big issue because we will lay in bed at night and we will be so plugged in to connecting to the internet, to social media, whatever it is, but you're not connecting to who you love and who is there right and your partner. You. Yeah, <laughs> it's a big problem. So ask yourself, what am I connecting to and what do I need to say no to, to say yes to the big picture? Because the relationships, are such a pivotal thing in quality of life. Again, Amy stressed loneliness. More people die from loneliness than most diseases. It's a big thing. And if you or your spouse is lacking and you're lonely, we can't neglect the vulnerability that takes place with that. Mm -hmm. So infidelity is going to be discussed when you're talking about a sexless marriage. And no one's condoning it but you need to be very careful whether whatever receiving end you're on, if you're the, the one who's lacking the physical intimacy and it's, and it's affecting you, or if you are withholding physical intimacy, you can't throw infidelity out the door. You certainly cannot. And it's, it's what's your return on investment? Every aspect of connecting with your partner is a return on your investment. 
And when we disconnect, when we disconnect, it's slippery. It's, it, it leaves a lot of room for issues. And infidelity and divorce are two biggies. They're two biggies. And also remember that the best gift that you can give your children is a solid, loving marriage. That's the best gift you can give your kids. So if you're in the PTO and you're on this committee and you're on that committee and you're saying yes to all of these things, but you're saying no chronically to your spouse, you may want to ask yourself if you have your priorities in order. Didn't, isn't the phrase you, you shared once upon a time, make the most important thing the most important thing? <clears throat> It's make yeah. time yeah. with your partner a top priority. Go to bed at the same time. Always, you know, or, or yeah. you know, and that is big. If it's a Only timing because I thing, live that. Yes. yes, and if it's a timing thing, because I'll be honest, you know, sometimes <laughs> we're really tired at night. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to be very transparent. So my husband and I have decided that either right when I, you know, I work later, mm -hmm. but when I get home from work, if he's home that's a much more conducive time than waiting until we go to and bed. And there's nothing wrong with it. Oh, that's it's the perfect. There's no it's perfect. place and time. Don't worry about it. And that can be the exciting part of it. Also, if you need to schedule, it's funny, I have had this question presented to me more than once in my commenting section. With having a large family and so many children, did, your, did you and your husband have to ever schedule sex? That's a great question. And no, we have not. I, I'll share that. But if you have to, don't judge that. That's okay. It's what he's not gonna. He's not gonna say. Well, it's on the calendar. That's just a little. I don't like that. Uh, that's just too predictable. No, he's not gonna turn it down. Whatever you need to do, don't question it. Don't judge it. Just get the job done. That's really it. No, and that's the thing. Rethink things because maybe you're simply in a rut and you're, you think it has to be a bedtime because right. that's the way we yeah. always did yeah. it. Yeah. No. no. Open, no. you know, yeah. and you have to work, you have to do with what works. Yeah, exactly. Especially there's couples that aren't on the same schedule. You can still make it work. Again, if it's important to you, you'll make it happen because we all make happen what is important to us. We all have the same number of hours in a given day. How can I tell you yeah. that sex is important? It, it's very <laughs> important and it's pleasurable. I, it's pleasurable. There are so many that. health benefits yeah. as well. I well, mean, actually, it, it is. Yeah, it'll absolutely. keep you young. It definitely it's, will. It's good for your skin. It's good it's for your everything. your organs. Yeah. I mean, it's obviously, for your relationship. Just yes. get the job done. It's yes. not that difficult. <laughs> well, me. it's not that difficult. And again, there are some biological issues right. that if it's and if, yeah. see a doctor. I mean, well, it's exactly important good. enough to get yeah. over your fear, to get over your awkwardness right. of speaking to a medical professional right. if you're experiencing some biological. If difficulty. it's dysfunctional, get it to functional. It doesn't have to jump right into optimal. It doesn't have to. But any dysfunction that you in most dysfunction, frankly, we can't we can't tackle on our tackle on our own. If you're in a dysfunctional state, this is even personally. Maybe you don't even know need to go into couples counseling. Maybe you were abused as a child. This is something well, even, you could step up and absolutely, take care. Absolutely, but even anxiety and depression and just. Yeah additional stressors in your life will decrease your sex drive. And so either, you know, have that awareness, work through that, or seek professional help. Now I will state that sex also reduces those things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but it it is something that you need to to just recognize the importance of. Right. And again, you know, I'm, we have to you know, there are, are some outliers, whereas, you know, sex is, you, both parties have a low sex drive. Imagine, you know, the serendipity of two people with very low sex drives happening to be together. But that's very, we filled up one SD card and I'm not sure where it shut off, but we were talking about erectile dysfunction. We have a lot to talk about apparently. And we don't well and we no. we're not sure exactly right. where it left off. Well this okay. I think that's that important because we were we were yeah. both stating yeah. so erectile dysfunction is typically a symptom of cardiovascular disease, um, diabetes, diabetes mm -hmm. uh, a couple of other things. So 
Again, if it, you know, if painful sex oftentimes for female, these kinds Especially of things. Especially menopause years, there's a you, lot of vaginal dryness. And, and vaginal dryness, okay, we all know that just by the lubricant. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, but if it's, it's really painful, works. or again with ED, definitely seek professional help. However, if it's if it's not gotten to that point, and you're just simply, you know, you haven't had sex for a while, and now it's feeling a little awkward, what a sex therapist will have a couple do is just kind of start off, okay, we're not going to have sex. Mm -hmm. There's not going to be any oral sex penetration, mm -hmm. et cetera. Mm -hmm. We're simply going to become more comfortable just lying naked together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's kind of a gradual buildup is typically what sex therapists will have couples do. So that's something that you could do if you have not gotten to that point where it's truly dysfunctional, where you definitely need professional help. Just do it. Gradually, yeah, you know, sure. take the pressure off. Because Get your toes wet a little bit after, at first. after, really? yeah, after yeah. it, after Makes a sense. long time, there is more tension built mm -hmm. around the topic. Mm -hmm. So take that pressure off. That's mm -hmm. pressure is mm -hmm. not an aphrodisiac. Yeah, yeah. I want to share something about I going back to the social media uh, thing. So I was doing a little little searching around on statistics. Ten percent. Of people, I saw that, and I, yeah. I know the same thing. I know that. Check, so I, I'll read it. Ten percent of people check their phones during sex, and thirty-five percent immediately afterwards. We Folks, have a problem. <laughs> we are connected to the internet and disconnected problem. from our spouse. It's and it's so sad. And the other area I want to go back into is talking to your children. So. I have five daughters and I have had people reach out to me asking if I would ever talk about how my husband and I, through raising our daughters, uh, how we viewed sex and how we talk to them about sex. And I haven't disclosed that, but I, a lot of things I do for privacy for my own children. But I do want to share this. I think it is so unfortunate that we as people, or individuals become sexually active at such a young age and the statistics are showing that most people are sexually active about 10 years prior to actually marrying. Which so is, what I think part of why we become dissatisfied within our marriage exactly. earlier. It is because you have explored all of these these feelings that you get and then when you're married there becomes a time where the excitement wears off but that doesn't mean the pleasure but some people are always looking for that type of excitement that they got from all of those experiences prior to marriage so if you want to talk to your children about sex I would recommend you do it in a healthy way. You don't tell them sex is bad. You don't tell them sex is dirty. You tell them the opposite. Sex is beautiful. It's natural. It's pleasure. We were designed to engage in it. It's what they're doing prior to marriage is what you need to talk about. That this is something that is sacred to you and your spouse when you get married. So give them the positives to the beautiful thing of sex. It's a beautiful thing. And, and express this to your children because let them know you have this to look forward to. You, you're going to fall in love someday. And this is going to be a beautiful part of your relationship. But that's not the message that our children are getting. And we're allowing them to get their message from the outside world instead of us. Who do you want your kids to get their message from? The parents, but make it positive. You have nothing to be ashamed of. Orgasms, that's great, that's part of the pleasure. That's positive. Don't give them the negative, but it's all in when they engage in this. It's all about when they engage in it. So you, oh, we could do a video on this. <laughs> and I've got five see, daughters, and so I have I, three yeah. boys. So yeah, it's, it's a little different. Yeah, you know, sure. I'm, I'm, of course, very adamant to say, you know, no means no. It, I, I mean, sure. my boys are good hearted yeah. boys, but um, I think those are important messages. Yeah. Um, you know, and here's the thing, ladies. <laughs> Men want the emotional connectedness that sex 
gives them Absolutely. too. They, it's not just yeah. you. It, I mean, yeah. yes, they definitely want physical, the physical is primary. Release, Their primary is physical, but our they primary is emotional. Feel connected yeah, to sure. us yeah. just as much as we yeah. believe it or yeah. not yeah. feel connected to them yeah. with yeah. sex as well. So before we wrap up, let's talk one more thing. Yeah, real go quick. for it. Yeah, just real quick. I've seen statistics also that said that one thing that helps women who have a low sex drive is to talk to their friends, mm -hmm. to talk to other women. I've seen statistics supporting less distress regarding sex, more um, adventure, more openness mm -hmm. to so. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. If you know, I if, 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 it's if, if it's not if it's too, healthy, well, yeah. first of the, first of all, you don't want there to be judgment. You don't you know you don't want to necessarily give other people advice, mm -hmm. but sometimes just opening the discussion to say, I'm struggling in this area. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, you, it's not it's not about spouse bashing. It's not about but some getting do together. That. So that's. Yeah. That's, yeah, don't you may, don't engage in that. There's no, nothing to positive. Set those things in, yeah. in in advance. Sure. But that's just one little thing. Mm -hmm. If you're not to that dysfunctional point where you need professional yeah. therapy, right? Yeah. From the, again, functional to optimal. I mean, what? Be open. Don't be shut down from the topic altogether. Yeah. Let's, yeah. Let's talk about sex. Yeah. Let's talk about sex, baby. <laughs> so let's talk about some things that you can do to reconnect. And let me let me ask a question, uh, because in my coaching, it's a lot of questions. I want I'm curious, and I want to hear feedback because it helps me. But what would it look like for you if you were to approach your partner, your spouse? and say, I'd like to talk about our intimacy. I'd like to talk about where we are with our sex life. What would that look like for you? What do you think the possibilities could be if you did that? But you have to be very open to utilizing the ear. No judgments, just true, authentic tapping into one another like you used to. And that's where I'm transitioning is where how did you get to where you are today? Obviously, attraction, desire, fulfillment. Uh, you appreciated one another. These are all the traits and characteristics that formed why you are together. You know, when couples are together, uh, they, they talk about marriage someday. Uh, this, is a, this is a union where we discuss it. You talk about, when would you like to start a family? What are your thoughts on it? But we neglect to talk about a big thing in our marriage, and that's sex. So what would that look like for you? And what are some of the, the things that you could do today? Not tomorrow, not put it off, but what could you do today? What could you say no to today to say yes to saying, Honey, I know I have not been showing up for you. I know I haven't. That would be so impactful. Just you know, saying, absolutely. And I apologize for that. So please share with me what I am not providing and giving to you. And I want you to be open and transparent, no judgment. I'm not going to come back and attack you. I know I haven't been there for you physically, and I know. And there's been times you haven't been there for me emotionally. And I, I think we should really talk about this, because I want to get us back to where we were. There's a huge thing that we have to get over to get to that point. Ooh, yes, and it starts with a E, e. G, <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah. It's yeah. We can we can rise above. We can be yeah. the bigger person. Right. We can be the hero in the relationship yeah. to make things right. Sure. And again, I promise it will come back to serve you as well. I promise. It always will. Yeah. Because energy attracts like energy. And you know, <laughs> you make your partner happy, he or she will make you happy. It's coming back. It Whatever you put out will come back. And if you don't believe me, if you're like, yeah, yeah, energy attracts, like, I, I challenge you to do it. I challenge you to say, do you remember when we used to drive around in that crappy car that you had when we first met? We would drive around and we would blare the radio. Do you remember when we used to do that? And, and your, the passenger door didn't even open. Are we going to go back to having car sex? Yes. 
do you remember when we did that? So there you go. Do you see how I'm talking to Amy? That's called reconnecting. You know, remember when we used to sing Leonard Skinner out loud, as loud as we could at the top of our lungs? Do you remember when we watched Top Gun, the movie, over and over? Remember Goose and Maverick? Oh my gosh, you were, these are all connections. Recreating old experiences. Yeah. And yeah. experiencing new things together. Right. Very bonding. Mm -hmm. You know, when is the last time you touched your partner like this? Just, that's all you have to do. I mean, I do it to Amy every time I see her because, and I'm, and touch isn't my love language. Mine neither. It's not, or my top one, It, but it's very high I, I, for my I husband. I appreciate it, but I do. I remind myself, Amy, go kiss him before yeah. you go up to the shower. Yeah. Because, yeah. so for me, I don't, I'm not or, opposed to it. Or just go up to the shower with him. <laughs> there you go. Let's go. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. <to> Cheers. <laughs> um, there you go. There's, can you imagine? Well, can you imagine? You know, and woo, just on a sidebar, don't knock it till you try it. You know, we all, no. all think, I could never, but have you tried it? It's all good. It really, it really is. Um, but I do. I remind myself. Amy and I are still in our prime. Love languages. Yes. Perry menopause is not not knocking us in the butt in that way. I think maybe fully into menopause, but you know, I still recognize, and I'm mm -hmm. a couples counselor. Yeah. That sometimes we need to tweak our communication. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's like, well, why aren't yeah. he thinks. I don't want to, mm -hmm. I think he doesn't oh, communicate, you know, yeah. and, yeah. and, and, um, he's not going to reject you. So if you come out and you do something that's out of your element and you feel a little awkward about it, it's okay. It's okay to be awkward at times. Well, that's it's absolutely, that's an emotionally that's, yeah. intimate bonding experience. Yeah. When you acknowledge sure. your vulnerability to your yeah. partner, mm -hmm. huge, yeah. huge. Yeah. So a couple takeaways, open the lines of communication when it comes to sex. It's, it's imperative. Key, absolutely. Don't hold back. Think of it like your finances, the household duties, what the kids have on the agenda for the school year. Don't neglect it. It can, it can be pivotal in your relationship. Step out of your comfort zone. It's okay. Enjoy what you should be enjoying. It's pleasure. It's, it, embrace it and don't hold back from showing it. Don't feel funny about maybe being a little verbal and vocal. And, and, and that's another thing. Don't hesitate to talk and a little you, dirty. If you sex can't, him. you could sex if him. If you have to work up to the verbal, the actual, yeah. just give a little, mm, yeah. So, yeah. A moan. If he know, if you can't just say the words, a moan oh. is going to tell him that you are enjoying yep. your experience because again his self-confidence so he, again he's more physically inclined where we're more emotionally so if you were to give that subtle hint or go all out hint that you are being pleasured by him that is going to go a long way and get over your ego get over your holding it against him because maybe he's not contributing in the home if you want him to contribute, then maybe you should contribute, right? If you, if, if you make him happy, he will be more... Energy attracts <laughs> like energy. Just write that down. What I put out, I will get back. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. If you don't, get on the commenting section in a week and tell me that I didn't, I didn't recognize that. But what you give out is what you will, will receive. It always happens. And Law of attraction. I mean, it really is. No, I... Again, if a queen is happy when her king is happy, vice versa. Yeah. I mean, yeah. give and you shall receive. That's yeah. so cool. <laughs> <laughs> give and you shall. Ah, what are we giving and what are we? Well, it's nice to be the giver, but, but it's nice to be your, your indecise. Well, so there you go. We'll be more willing to give to you if they right. feel wanted, if they sure. feel that their yeah. needs matter to you, your needs are going to matter to them. That's right. Have a little fun. Ask him if he would like to be the giver first and you be the receiver or if vice versa. Have a little fun. There's nothing wrong with it. Even at our age, ladies, and oh, older. Enjoy it. Have fun. And sex 
good sex happens at any age. Absolutely. So don't yeah. think you're beyond enjoying sex. No, no. Long-term marriages, short-term marriages. I'm what, 27, 28 years in? I'm two and She's a half years in to second, this marriage. Yeah. Second it's, marriage. And, and, it's, and honestly, it doesn't, I wouldn't say that mine is any less than a, a newer one. It's what you make of it. It's really where you put your value and what are you saying no to to say yes to your partner. Yeah. And guess what? Saying yes to your partner is saying yes to you because again, mm -hmm. this is something that's going to make your life more fulfilling in mm -hmm. so many more ways. Yeah. And, and again, bigger issues, seek professional help. Yep. If you're dysfunctional, then I would seek professional help. Now, if you're functioning and you just want to go optimal, then you could even reach a, reach a, a life coach like myself. But if you're complete dysfunction, I would say therapy would be your initial start. Let's get you to functioning and then we can take you to optimal. So you can do this, right? You Anything's just, possible. Just do it. Just do it. Just go out there and have fun and enjoy and have that orgasm, right? The big O. There See, you, you don't, there's nothing to hide. It's not dirty. It's enjoyable. And express it, right? <laughs> Let them know. <laughs> Another Madonna song. <laughs> express yourself. Yeah, express you yourself. to me. Express yourself. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> We're so what are, girls, we, what are we going to do tonight? Now, I've been wanting to ask you. Yeah. Because Ooh, you, let's talk about it, baby. I, the, the thing that we get excited about together, though, food and wine. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we talk about sex sometimes. Oh, well, we talk about sex. Yeah. We don't engage. No. <laughs> no. Well, not together. No, I mean. <laughs> what? <laughs> Let's talk about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the good things and the bad things that may be. Let's talk about sex. 